Good day everyone, let's play Pick a Car. <laughs> That's going to be my next episode of the For Speed The Run, in which I am selecting a car to pick at the start of the stage. Uh, well, I had a bit of difficulty when it comes to recording this, my computer kept crashing, so I had to restart from the start. But at least this gives us ample opportunity to pick a car that I wouldn't pick in the first place, because before we were driving that 911 GT2, let's change things up a little bit. And let's go for probably the coolest Japanese car at the moment. Or in my opinion at least. We are picking the Lexus LFA, putting an aero body kit, and probably gonna go hmm yellow or blue or red. Actually I'm gonna go hmm Yeah blue. Because I love um, Lexus blues. If you actually see an ISF in real life, or an IS350 in this sort of blue, it looks bloody fantastic. But, as I was saying before, we are going to pick this supercar right here, because it probably is one of the coolest Japanese cars at the moment. Reason being is that this car is bonkers. Less attention to details, all right. You see the uh, exhaust. Exhaust. You see the uh, spoiler just popping out right there. But this car is absolutely bonkers, as I should say. It's not the fastest supercar, by no means it isn't. But this car has been raved on by by many, many races and review journalists, reviewers, etc. But one of the things that strike this car as being bloody amazing is the fact that this car is uniquely Japanese. And I say that because, I'm going to say this right now besides the fact that you can tell that I'm not the biggest fan of most Japanese cars, it's because usually the best stuff has pretty much came up from an idea from a European car. You know, you can't really say that most Japanese cars are unique. Not all of them are, you know, blatant plagiarisms or anything. Not all of them, I should say. But most of them are. But this car is unique for the fact that Besides being an absolute tech dream of some sort, it looks bloody fantastic. It doesn't look like any other car. It's very unique, very uniquely Japanese, and it has been the best Japanese sports car to come out. Oh, supercar, I should say. Oh, I can't believe I had to crash that R8. If only I was driving a Lamborghini Murcielago, then I could be like Bruce Wayne versus Tony Stark. Yes, the Avengers just came out, so it's about time I make that sort of reference. What's going to be better, Dark Knight Rises or the Avengers? I'm putting my money on Prometheus, but I am deviating from the points right now because I am trashing up this beautiful car. Even the uh, tri-exhaust at the back, you know, something different but something so bloody awesome. The car is very easy to car drive in this kind of game. I think in real life as well. The reason why I picked this Aero body kit as well is the fact that it reminds me of the uh, no spec version of the LFA. That pretty much has the world record at the moment as the fastest car around the no big ring with normal tyres. Or I'd say normal tyres. Without racing tyres, I should say. Jeez, and there's another R8. Except for the fact that this doesn't have an outrageously big spoiler, and no one has died in my car yet. But only 500 of these cars were made, and let's just say I had 1 million dollars right now, and I wanted to buy one. The Lexus people would laugh at me and shoo me away because you won't be able to buy this car unless you're chosen by Lexus corporate people. I don't know what that criteria is, but you actually have to be chosen, you have to be handpicked to be able to drive one of these, or to actually buy one of these. Bit of a sad truth though, 500 of them and you can't sell them, by the way, you're not allowed to sell them in two years time, because you can't obviously make a profit from them, nor, uh, nor can you actually really drive one, unless you're a journalist of some sort. 500 worldwide. Think about it. Exclusivity. 
sort of like how the Enzo, you can't be able to just walk into the showroom to buy a Ferrari Enzo. Unless you had maybe three or four Ferraris beforehand. Well, doesn't matter because we are going to switch cars. Enough rambling about this Toyota. I'm actually going to pick another car. Um, the reason being is that I want to fit in as much car changes as possible so I can give some screen time to as many cars as possible. But I've already picked a car that I want to drive from probably Japan's coolest, best supercar. I am going to drive America's best looking, awesome, favored, revered, beautiful supercar, the GT40. Sorry, the Ford GT. And I'm going to pick yellow and black because it reminds me of Speed Racer or Racer X and his uh, shooting star. He just needs a 9. But anyhow, this car is pretty fast in this game. For some reason, it feels a bit slow. I don't know why. I think it might be a bit buggy or something, but I've actually skipped a bit of the race because it's a bit of a boring race. It's pretty much a, uh, a battle within the uh, dust storm, but the only thing that the dust storm does is pretty much just cloud your vision. Okay, careful there. Make sure you're paying attention because I knew that the, um, <laughs> the counter on the side was, you know, counting down really fast and I had to crash up that Evora really quickly. There's always a Lotus at every single stage, at the end of every single stage that gives me trouble you know, a few paces just before the finish. I don't know if the game is trolling me or not. But again, I'm going to be skipping a lot of these um, races because I know there's actually a lot of stages in this video. And there's actually a lot of things that happen near the end. So mind me if I am skipping the first few races here. At least it gives me time to start talking about why the GT4 GT is such a beautiful, beautiful car. In a nutshell, it's just pretty much the history of the Ford GT40. In much in a nutshell, I could explain this all day, but you know, when time allows me, we finally have cops. Hmm. And let me tell you, the cops will be chasing us pretty much from now on. But anyhow, as I was saying before, in a nutshell, this car, or the Ford GT, was designed to be the Ferrari killer. Henry Ford just signed a check, a blank check, told his engineers, Oi, make me a car that's faster than the Ferraris at the moment for Le Mans. I don't care how much it's going to cost, just do it. And his engineers did it, and he came up with this beautiful car, which absolutely raped the Le Mans from 1966 to 1969 by the top of my memory. Won it four, time, uh, four times in a row? Yes. Ooh. But pretty much it was um, Henry Ford's of saying, word, way of saying, fuck you Ferrari. It was actually going to buy Ferrari. And they were gonna, you know, go through the paperwork and everything until Enzo Ferrari at the end just decided, nah, not doing it. It's all to do with the uh, different race events like the Indianapolis and stuff like that. But that's just getting too technical. But anyway, Enzo Ferrari's like, nah, fuck you, not doing it. At the last minute, Henry Ford's like, oh, fuck these fuckers. Make a car that's better, faster than an air cars. Now I'll show him. And guess what?
Welcome to our first boss fight in which we are racing Nikki and Miller. If you actually play this for the first time, you actually are not their cars, but I feel sorry for the sister that was pretty much stooged to using our 350Z rather than the 370Z that's um, actually trying to catch up with now. Again, it's actually a very easy race, so nothing too worrying. One of the reasons why I'm doing this post commentary right now is the fact that it kept crashing around here. Every single time I would actually stack my car, the game would absolutely freeze. So I'm actually trying really, really hard not to crash, just because it'll help me out for the game. But it's so the game doesn't crash at all. Now the irony of crashing a car and crashing the game. So you can see right now I'm actually driving a little bit slower yet smoother. I'm actually concentrating for once. Oh, I felt like I was driving the, um, oh, god damn it. I felt like I was driving a Datsun 240Z in order, you know, complete the picture. Or if they had 300ZXs. Unfortunately, they don't have it in this game. Hmm. So it's actually a pretty easy race. All you have to do is just keep an eye on the, um, mini screen right there. Mini map, I should say. I can't believe I'm hitting my GT40 like this. Would, would you technically call it a GT40? It's not really a GT40. The reason why it's called a GT40 is the fact that it is actually 40 inches off the... Ooh, it just popped up from the side of the screen. 40 inches off the road. And I'm pretty much at these cars nowadays uh, abide by regulations. Road and safety regulations. But we have the cops just popping up on the side of the road right there. And again, can't have an E for speed game without some cops. So how is this for a first boss race? You're racing two chicks who uh, one of them gets stooge. We are in Las Vegas! Being Australian, I've always wanted to actually know what Las Vegas was. I've lived in um, the Americas for a few years, but I never got to touch Vegas. Because I was too young back in the day. And I was too obsessed with arcade games back in the day to actually care what was happening. But this race here, this is where you'll start seeing me fuck up. <laughs> As by example right there. I got a little bit distracted by the fact that there's a gas station nearby. And I sort of wanted to change my car because I knew the sort of race coming up would actually need a high level of fidelity. Something that this car does not have in this video game. In real life, yes. Because these cars actually handle pretty damn well. Unlike a lot of American cars. God damn, I'm sucking. Half the time the reason why I'm just wrecking myself is the fact that I always see two sort of ways to go and I'm a little bit indecisive of which actual direction I have to go. <laughs> okay, just keep racing. How about I go a little bit slower? Yeah. Why don't I just take things a little bit slow and that's going to help me out and get freaking confused. Oh, and there's the bloody metro station. Damn it! Oh well. Doesn't matter. I'm just driving through Las Vegas. What's that to deal with? Even as this would be more so the outskirts. You can see in the background that the uh, tall building city of flights. We're just going through the residential area. Wow, jeez, man, these uh, corners are extremely tight. But again, this actually improves on the feel of this game. The fact that every single, or well, most of the time I should say, every single race is different and has a nice feel to it. Ah ha ha ha. Another thing you gotta worry about. You won't actually see the cop cars until it's too late. Because when they're high, when they're a lot ahead of you, they actually turn off the lights. And it would only turn them on as soon as you get close to them, so. Make sure you're paying attention to that minimap as well as driving. 
and I have had that problem many times in which I am paying attention to one but not the other. Are you serious? There's a petrol station there? <laughs> Fuck! Mmm, it's like I'm playing Destruction Derby or Twisted Metal because right now I'm just pinballing around the track. Doesn't matter as long as I pass it. It's probably my worst, <laughs> worst attempt at that level right there. Again, I've gone through many, 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 many recordings for this stage in particular. It's given me absolute hell, so I've just realised that I can't really be bothered trying just for this stage. But let me tell you, the next stages and stuff will be absolutely fine again. I don't know why I always have problems around Las Vegas. But the reason why I included this, <laughs> this track... Oh. Come on, as if you can tell which way to go there. But you can tell that the cops are getting um, a little bit more overboard when it comes to trying to block us a lot. <laughs> These are a lot harder than bloody... Um, well, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit and the other Need for Speeds. I'm lucky I'm actually driving slow enough that I don't wreck my car. Come on, come on. Ah. This ain't GDA, man. You serious? Actually, I was actually surprised at what that's actually happening because, again, didn't expect this. Bit of a welcome change. And let's see me sucking at quick time events, in which I'll fuck up this one. But it doesn't really matter because you can always rectify things. At least it's actually a good set of quick time events. I know I said I blame Resident Evil, but really I blame... What's that game? Dragon's Lair. The original quick time event game. But let's just keep running. Let's keep mashing that A button. Do I get to kick him? Yep, yep, do I? Yeah, I knew it. Brought to you by Adidas. I actually want to, I was sort of wanted to actually showcase this quick time event of me failing all the uh, different events because I want to see if there's actually any blood in this game. Maybe you get mauled by that dog of some sort. Is there a quick time event for this chair? Oh, come on. Cop out. And I love how that he tries to wear a hat to escape from the cops, just so he doesn't get noticed and he gets noticed straight away as soon as he exits the uh, shop. No, not the Audi. John Connor. Okay. <sighs> Going through the realms of reality right now? Hmm. So, weren't we racing? <laughs> hey, $9.95 for all you can eat? Hmm. Only in Las Vegas. Actually, someone from Las Vegas told me. I want to know if you actually have $9.95 all you can eat buffets. Because that'll be sick. That's cheap ass, come on. Nine ninety five. That's a the average Big Mac meal from Australia. At least you can tell how long my total runtime is. Thirty nine minutes. Hmm. And I've been cutting out. So we need to find a new car. And what do you know? We have three cars right here that we can steal. The V twelve Vantage. They 
Gallardo and the Porsche GT3 RS, the 4.0 liter. What am I going to pick? What am I going to pick? Hmm. I do like Astons, but I do like Porsches. But I've already picked a Porsche. Why don't I pick this lamp? Nah, fuck it. Let's just pick this Porsche. It doesn't really matter anyhow because I'm going to change my car as soon as possible. But that allows us to go up a tier in our uh, car selection. So there'll be new cars now. Thanks to us stealing these cars, valet parked or not, we will see in our next video in which we are going to see some new terrain again. This one's has a bit of a gimmick, I should say. There's going to be a lot of cops. But until then, that will be until the next episode. Till then.